The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Because it is impossible that offenses should not come. You should never say, I will never offend anyone. So you, you shouldn't say that for me, I will never offend anyone. Because it is impossible that no offense should come. See, the scripture says it is impossible. So no matter what you do, you may be offending people, but you may not know. Do your best not to be offensive. But you cannot say, I will never offend anyone. Because sometimes what people take offense at against you, you don't have any idea. It sounds like no maybe or what? Nipadi uh ya wonhua one kasampo wunim. And sometimes offending people uh, it's just not in your power. Uh, you try, but somebody say you have offended me. You are say you are shocked because it's not even in your power. I told you be a wa would to be sintidiano, and ya dear was said I yet now so be asho who said what to miss intidia. Then when you hear it, you are surprised. Now what tip nefe a bo pusa. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, somebody can just see your nose and the person is offended. Oh wow, you said you know me saying you know here no. It's offended. Oh, I don't go out Just look at his nose. Oh, he That's he one alone. You said you are here from one. Now to be sincere. I'll give you one example. Mama, you just walk back. Mark chapter 6. Yeah, if you are married to a simple no it is here. I'm saying we want to bring this example so that you know that sometimes even what people take offense at against you, you may not even have the power to control. Jesus left John Mark 6, I should say, verse 1. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. Accompanied by his disciples. Now remember that the chapter before, he has cast 2,000 demons from a legend, a mad fellow, I should say, and then he has also healed this woman with the issue of blood, and he has raised someone from the dead. I say answer na odru hano na wakoto tuwa money bebre efidan fubim and we chino wasai enyani ofo and wasa nyare wa answer. So now he comes to his hometown, his disciples following. Na afi wakwako du nukroma ne suya for no edinechi. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where this, where did this man get these things? They asked. What's this wisdom that he, ha he has been given? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Now, Homeda Edru, you know, of it, I see a church, a wong, shadden mu, na nipa pi, our tea, you know, one would you want? Now, what can I say? And he, and now you can't know me, young sub bang na or de or de amanui, na some one dinier or de nensa. Yes. Isn't this the carpenter? Hmm? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James and Joseph, Judas and Simeon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Maria Bano, Yakobo, any Yossi, any Judah, any Simon, no, any Anunie. Now, what did he do against we, this? 
The, the New Living Translation says that they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Deeply. Why? I think. They thought that Jesus was claiming to be someone he could not be. A teacher and a healer, the Christ. They have always known him to be a carpenter. So what is this carpenter trying And they got offended. Deeply offended. What did Jesus do? See, sometimes you may not have control what people take offense at against you. So you shouldn't say that for me, I will never offend anyone. Do your best. But you should never say never. Because sometimes you also have to set the records straight. Set the records straight. Other times, you need to discipline a child. Or someone under your roof. So that you save them from moral corruption. In some circumstances, you need to act in certain ways in order to save an organization from rot or collapse. And that may not be pleasant to all. Now, so you shouldn't say that for me, I will never offend. That is not how we live on this earth. Because of some people. You have to set record straight. Stay Jesus and the Pharisees. I'll take one of their encounters from Matthew 15. Now from verse 1. Matthew 15 from 1. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked. And uh, for no for a for no be free. Jerusalem, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. I didn't see and I was sure for no any and penny for at it is no so one or one sa and son where did it? They today should have washed their hands before. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus replied, and, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Yes, we are one say, I didn't see, and I'm on so, my titty seminty, when you and your coupon, I said, yes. So Jesus is not agreeing that they not washing their hands is right. But he only responded to their question with a question. You know these Pharisees, the Bible said they came from Jerusalem. That was where the temple was. And that was the seat of the authority of Judaism. So coming from Jerusalem simply means that they were of the highest rank of the Pharisees. And people pay attention to them. Whatever they said, people take it as the gospel. It is the gospel truth. See, this gave them some great some advantage and they wanted to leverage on that arguing with Jesus. So Jesus wanting to set the record straight and to protect the command of God. Instead of responding directly to the Pharisees, he invited the crowd to come and listen. Now verse 10. Verse 10. 
Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. No, so Jesus praised the matter beyond ceremonial cleanliness to inner purity. To the standard, he's now saying that one's word is a measure of the fellow's character. And that is what is important according to Jesus. Now, what he said to the Pharisees, let's listen to what, ha what uh has really happened to them by this discourse. Verse 12. Then the disciples came to him and said, and, and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And he said, so the Pharisees were offended. The Pharisees were no, not two or something. By who? Why? By not Jesus. Yes, sir. So you cannot say that I will never offend. It wouldn't mean because I mean to be a sentido ya da. We will check whether he apologized. Ya beshe so apa chawa. Now the the New Living Translation puts it this way. Na chiro no say ana ichirum. Do you realize you offended the Pharisees? But what you just said. So the New Living Translations rendering judges Jesus as offending. I thought Jesus would have, would have, would have been sorry and then apologize. For offending them. But he will not. And states the reason why he will not. <laughs> this is Jesus. So. so when you are a pastor, don't say me, I will not offend. Verse 13. He replied, Every plant that my heavenly father has not planted heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the root. Instead of saying, sorry, I'm not even going to cut. I will pull it from the root. Leave them. They are blind guys. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit and he has to save them. Now, now Jesus gives two reasons why he will not apologize for offending. Number one, their teaching and traditions were not from God and needed to be there should be no apology for that. The teachings were not from God. And he needed to approach. Somebody will say that, but you have to do it in a way that you don't offend. That one will be up to you. Number two. They were blindly leading people astray. And he had to stop them. Now, when you fry for what you need, and you fry for crying, now it's a so bomb. What do you see? And that was the primary reason why he drew the crowd into the conversation. Now, when you and a bomb, what do you have, friend? Go for a quick one, say one more, and come with you. Don't say, man, can't that I will never offend anyone. Say, maybe I mean to be as indeed we are. Sometimes, to the beer, you need to set the record straight. I said, what's in it in a quiet. Because of your children. 
because of their future because of the organization because of your business set the record straight you should be able to tell somebody that this thing is wrong sometimes you need to set the record straight I'll talk about Peter and Paul but when I attempt, that one would take about 30 minutes. So I'll put a comma here. But I want to say that we need to be careful. We shouldn't say, from me, I will never offend anyone. What I'm saying is not putting stumbling blocks on people's way. No. I'm, I'm not, what, I'm, what I'm not saying yeah. is putting stumbling block on people's way. Yeah. Sometimes we actually set traps for people. That is not what I'm saying. Uh, I'll me, talk about that later. But in our dealings with people, you can never say, I will not offend. No. Sometimes, you need to tell your son that I don't want you to walk with this guy. Let him be offended. You are saving his future. Sometimes you need to tell your, your boy that you better sit down and study. You better sit down and study. Tell them. <laughs> Sometimes you need to look at a pastor's face and tell him. And I don't do that again. <laughs> don't do that again. Human beings. Yeah, we're not we. born to be dominated. But all of us have to be controlled. So that we don't get spoiled. Never say. For me. I will never offend anyone. Shall we rise in prayer? Shall we rise in prayer? You may not be doing yourself any good when you close your mouth and you are afraid of faces. Set records straight. But you just close your eyes and reflect. God give me wisdom. God give me grace to be able to deal, work with human beings. The boldness and the courage to set record states straight where it matters.